Oh, what is up, guys? Sorry, I was just checking the fridge and uh, you guys decided to tune in. Uh, as you can see, I got three shoe boxes here and uh, they've been in here for three weeks. And well, I'm gonna finally take them out because I'm back from my trip. And what the heck is going on here? What kind of mushrooms are growing here? Keep watching to find out, guys. What is up, everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today, and I'm so happy to be back, guys. I hope you guys have been doing well. Uh, so I came back from my three-week India trip around two days ago, and in today's video, I want to show you guys how all of my grows have been doing. Now, if you guys remember, before I left, what I did was I decided to put a bunch of my shoe boxes that I had going into the fridge, along with, of course, all the spawn jars. So these guys have been in the fridge for three weeks or more. In the case of the spawn jars, they've been in there for like a month. And, and also we have this thing over here. Uh, I will get into it later. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy this video. Now before, I, so I'm gonna give you guys an update on everything, like how they're doing and stuff. Are they contaminated? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And the experiment that I did with these substrates uh, with these shoe boxes is to leave them in three weeks because you know a lot of people have put spawn jars for example into the fridge for a couple of weeks right usually like two weeks max that's sort of like the like the time that people recommend that you leave spawn jars like fully colonized inside the fridge these have been in there for a month but it's more common to do that but i haven't heard of anybody putting their literal like tubs that are like fruiting into the fridge so some of these guys have had a first flush I, this guy has had a first flush the peu um the gandalf has not had a flush it was just about to start fruiting when i had to leave so that that's when i put it in the the mexican grass lovers have had a first flush so my experiment here is will they recover how will they do and also i would like to check up on how these guys are doing just in general but before we get started, the Patreon genetics tiers are going to be opening 10 to 15 spots. So if you've been waiting for a spot for those tiers, tomorrow is your chance. The 1st of September at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the spots will open first come, first serve. And also, I am back now. So I'm back open for business in terms of genetics or mentorship. So if you're interested, send me an email at mycophilia.official at gmail.com. So now we got that out of the way let's check up on how these guys are doing so let's start off with the mexican grass lovers rancho augusto now there's still little like pins uh from the past because i didn't harvest everything um but it's just like tiny so let's take a look all future updates on these tubs by the way guys as they start hopefully as they start showing fruits will be on patreon okay not on youtube because i'm not going to show much fruits here um but i'm just these guys are weird looking anyways, so I think it'll be fine. As you can see, there's a couple of fruits left on here. And yeah, you can see some of them are clearly aborted, but at the same time, others seem like as if they're just, you know, the same since yesterday. Like, you know, three weeks ago was yesterday, basically. Uh, nothing has changed, which is a good sign because it means that the fridge pretty much did a pretty effective job at keeping things in kind of stasis you know like these guys are definitely not aborted and i'm pretty sure that these guys didn't grow in the fridge because the fridge is way too cold for these guys um i think that they just basically kind of froze them in time so to speak which is good and i just literally got these guys out of the fridge so you could actually see the condensation on the tubs and everything like that you know, so I'm really looking forward as they sort of thaw out and warm up uh, how these guys perform, how quickly they can recover. Can they recover at all? You know, these kinds of things are the, the things that I'm looking at. So I'm very excited to see how they do. So this is the Gandalf. So this guy has, hasn't had a first flush. As you can see, there's a lot of water on the substrate. And I think that's just, wow, that's a lot of pooling water. So after I'm done with this video, I'm going to basically take a paper towel here and i'm going to dab up all of this excess moisture um they're just falling down from the lid is what's happening and so yeah it doesn't look too bad at all i don't see any mold or anything you can see uh the primordia just stuck in time um now i doubt that these you know formerly grown primordia all those weeks ago will recover i think what it's going to do is it's going to create new primordia but who knows 
who knows if it's like truly successful then this you know could just start growing again which would be amazing it doesn't look like it's aborted or anything like that and there's a lot of water down here so i'm gonna have to pick it up but other than that it's fine you can see some bluing here and you know one of the causes of bluing substrate well actually pretty much all causes well not all but most causes of bluing substrate it really comes down to some kind of something in the environment uh, or maybe some type of contamination. It's just basically a sign that the mycelium is being bothered by something and it's sort of dealing with it. And that's what's going on here. And in this case, I'm pretty much certain this is just ex excess water on here that uh, causes stress. Now, genetics is also another reason some cultures will are more likely to blue. And sometimes they may even blue for no apparent reason. But in this one, I'm pretty damn sure that it is just simply too much water that's stressing the mycelium out. So I'm gonna give it a good dab up and they should be fine. It's not mold or anything. Uh, this is just literally bluing of the mycelium. So I'm gonna close this guy up right now. Carefully avoiding any more water droplets from falling. And here we have the PEU, okay? So let's take a look at this guy. Now this guy is very interesting. I could already tell. Okay, so um, wow, we also got some side pins from before here. Let's give you guys a better angle here. Got some side pins from earlier. Okay, and some bottom pins as well. I guess tiny bottom pins. So yeah, let's take a look at this guy. As you can see guys, there are actually mushrooms still here and they don't look aborted at all. In fact, they're not aborted. I could tell you right now, they are not aborted. Some of them are. Um, for example, this guy right here looks aborted because of the bluing there. But this guy, for example, is not aborted. It looks like it just, you know, like you would never, if, if somebody told me this has been in the fridge for three weeks and we're just taking it out now, I wouldn't believe you but that's the case this guy i'm sure is some of the fruits that i didn't harvest from earlier um because i'm almost certain that these guys didn't pop up when um inside the fridge basically while i was away it's just way too cold for these guys um and there is a bunch of uh little pins and stuff that i didn't harvest before so i think that's what it is but then again i can't say with a hundred percent certainty it could be that these guys did pop up from a fridge from like while i was away in the fridge um but whatever the case these guys seem to be doing fine and i think they will recover fine there's some you know uh, little new pins coming in here and there i can't you know same situation with these guys i can't say for certain but i wouldn't be surprised if they were just basically you know, grown from three weeks ago, but they just sort of froze in time. And I think that's what's happening here. Well, I can't say with 100% certainty again. But either way, this is great news. You know, obviously no contamination and stuff like that that I can see. Uh, so this guy's showing a lot of promise. So hopefully um, these guys will produce some some fruits in the coming days and weeks. So I'm gonna close it back up. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the update for the tubs here. Okay. And so let's talk about these guys right here. So I brought this in from outside and this right here, what do you guys think this is? So this is white clover and they are just really thriving in here. I put a bunch of seeds in here. And why did I put a bunch of seeds in there? Because I wanted to do a live casing layer. Uh, this helps out the mushrooms to grow. Uh, it balances out some of the nitrogen and oxygen in the soil and also it provides an excellent microclimate and the thing about this is that nobody watered it while i was away like these guys nobody touched it it was fully neglected uh, i put like a compost bag over it so that it keeps a better microclimate and just put, poked a few holes in there that's all it required though and these guys are completely seemingly healthy you know totally fine and so what in terms of the fungus what did i put in here so i put in like a dirty spawn, a triked out spawn of um, sempervives, okay? Some sempervives, let's call it that, right? Subtropies, okay? I put in some subtropies in here and, you know, sempervives, right? Sempervivas, uh, whatever, I'll just say the name, sempervivas. Um, 
they literally mean ever living in Latin. And that's because these guys can take forever to fruit, right? Even from when you get the pin, it could take weeks for it to fully mature. And that's sort of um, what's happening here, I think. There's no sign that I can see of any pins or anything like that. Um, but hopefully they are there. Hopefully, you know, eventually we're going to get it, but I can't say for sure. Um, so, and also it's kind of hard to see down into the substrate layer, but yeah, hopefully we got some stuff, um, eventually, but either way, um, this is just sort of a endorsement of the live casing layer. You can see that basically I was able to neglect this through the hottest days of summer and it was, you know, they're fine. They've just kept a really nice microclimate within themselves. So yeah that's basically what I wanted to show you and i'm also going to be doing some more outdoor grows uh this season so it's already like it's already autumn basically right where i'm at it's the, the weather is basically autumn summer's gone long gone right it's it's getting colder and all that kind of thing so i am going to be doing some liberties that's the next plan so i'm gonna have to streak uh my swabs onto some spore plate uh, onto some plates agar plates and see how they do uh so i have a lot of projects coming up guys and i have a bunch of other stuff some of these guys i also want to spawn outside so these guys again have been in the fridge for even longer than these guys so about a month or even a month and one week i would say uh some of these guys though had wet rot but i can't really tell which one was which uh, so I'm basically going to have to, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was going to do the Bispos outdoors. This is Bispos, this is EQs, this is Starry Nights. I got another Starry Night over here. I think one of these guys, I'm, I'm going to do it indoors, spawn it indoors. I'm also planning to do an indoor live casing layer grow uh, as well coming up. Sorry guys, I'm kind of scatterbrained right now because I'm just sort of, it's all sort of coming back to me. Uh, this is another Semper Viva. I don't know if this one was dirty. I'm just going to wait until they thaw out a little bit and see how they perform once they recover. Yeah, this one was definitely wet rotty. Uh, you can see there's some uh, some uh, some grains like really, really just sort of exposed in the window. This is a good sign that it was wet rot. Um, but in this case, I actually also remember it was pretty much wet rotty. By the way, guys, this clover smells really nice. It's, it's like I want to put it into a salad and eat it. <laughs> Yeah, can you, can you actually eat white clovers? If you know, let me know down below in the comments. Genuinely curious. Hopefully we got some flowers too, it would be sweet. But yeah, I think that's pretty much everything guys for this video. So just a reminder, if you're interested in the Patreon genetic tiers, tomorrow's spots are opening. And also fruit and content will all be on Patreon for these guys, right? This is the only video update I'm gonna be making on YouTube for these guys here because it, Hopefully we get some big mushrooms and big mushrooms I will not post on, on YouTube. So yeah, guys, uh, mentorship and genetics. If you're interested, send me an email at michaelfile.official at gmail.com again. And that's pretty much the video for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have been well. Om mani padreham, padmeham. Wait, I, I probably butchered that right now. Um, but yeah, it was a great adventure, guys. I will be posting updates on Sage on Earth. That's the new channel that I made for my travel vlogs and things like that. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great dear night. I missed you guys. I hope you guys are ready to get back into the swing of things. I'm going to be continuing, of course, the Mushroom Mastery series. Um, so episode two is going to be coming out on supplies, what you need to get. Um, so that's probably going to be the next video, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Michael File Sage. Checking out for now.